Hello, welcome once again. And um, in today's class, we'll be talking about um, a very important topic that says transportation. All right, so um, today we are going to be looking at the various modes of transport that we have in Nigeria, and we are going to be discussing them one after the other. And also, we'll look at the advantage and the disadvantage of using these modes of transport. So let's um, jump right in. Now, what is transportation? Now, transportation is simply the movement of people, the movement of goods, the movement of services from one geographical location to another. So when people move from um, one place to another or they move goods and services from one place to another, we simply see it as transportation. So no matter how um, short the distance is or how long the distance is, it is seen as what? As transportation. And um, if we, and one thing about transportation is that it has existed, you know, long, bef uh, long you know, before what? Before time. You know, as far as humans, you know, move from one place to another, transportation existed you know, during that time. And um, during then, you know, they make use of the rudimentary, you know, modes of transport. And over time, it has what? It has evolved into what? Into a modern what? Trans, um, a modern mode of transport. And um, in our present day, transportation is actually divided into three categories. You know, we have the land transportation, we have the water transportation, and we have the air transportation and um, different um, technological improvements and advancements you know has enabled you know more efficiency or speed you know in these modes of what of transport and as a result they've made it more um, affordable they've made it um, more efficient and it's um, faster you know compared to the previous century and um, the previous um, era now, um, in um, today's modern transport, you see that it has helped to what, to improve uh, economic growth. It has helped to you know boost trade. It has helped people to connect with one another, and also it has helped you know different um, countries you know along around a uh, landscape to what, to grow in terms of their economy. So. Let's um, look at the modes of transport. Like I said, we have three modes of transport. We have the um, land transport, we have the water transport, and we have the air transportation. And we are going to look at these uh, modes of transport one after the other. So let's um, start with the first mode of transport. Now, the first mode of transport is called land transportation. It's called what? Land transportation. And it's a type of transport that takes place on land. And they include things like road transport, they include rail transport, and specialized land transport. Now, what I'm trying to say in essence is that land transportation is subdivided into road transport, um, rail transportation, and specialized land transportation. And um, when we talk about specialized land transport, we are actually talking about a, a type of um, land transport that is used to transport liquid materials, electricity, and many other um, items from one location on land to another world location. As you can see here, we have the world, the bus, which is a, um, an example of land um, road transport. We have the train here, an example of rail transport, and we have the gas pipeline as an example of specialized land transportation. Now, let's start um, with um, the road transport. Now, the road transport involves the use of vehicles, involves um, the use of um, vehicles like cars, vehicles like um, motorcycles, bicycles, and um, in places where the level of um, technology and development is very, very, very low. Like the countries that are in the third world, they make use of land transport like animals, which is called the beast of bordering. 
um, burden, and they also make use of what we call the head and human words, portrait. So in these countries, what they use is that what they do is that they use donkeys, they use camels, they use bulls and the rest, and they also carry things on their head, you know, and they move from one place to another by what by trekking. So it's also a form of land transport, but we call it human portrait, head portrait, and the use of beast of body. Now, the second um, land um, transportation is called the rail transport. Now, the rail transport is actually made up of locomotive trains, you know, that is built on coaches, and um, they move on the, the, the um, paths called gorges. So that rail path they move on is actually called what? Railway gorges. And we have three types of what? Of railway gorges. We have the narrow gorge, we have the standard gorge, and we have the broad gorge. And in advanced countries, they actually make use of the standard gorge, which is the fastest of all what? Of all rail lines. And in places where the um, topography is usually rough, you know, like highlands and you know, rugged, we make use of the narrow gorge. And in lowland areas, they make use of the broad gorge, especially places like in like Nigeria. You know, we have the standard and the broad gorge. So let's look at the third um, land transport, which is called the specialized land transport. And we're going to look at some examples of the specialized land transport. Let's take the first one as um, the ropeways and cableways. Now, um, you know, the, the when you have um, people or uh, resources or goods and services, you know, move from one place to another via a cable car or a cable transport is actually seen as ropeways or what or cable ways. Now they what they do is that they use chain lifts and they use cable to what to move things and people from one place to another. A good example is um, the OG thermal power station in um, in Nigeria. You know, they move coal you know, from Enugu down to Oji River using what? Using the ropeways or the cable ways. And the next example of the specialized land transport is the pipeline transportation. Now, the pipeline transports liquid materials like crude oil, you know, and water, you know, from the, where they are gotten to what? To their destination. So for the crude oil, they actually um, transport it through pipelines from the drilling um, station or the drilling point down to the refineries where it is being processed. And also it is used to transport water from dams to, uh, to consumers. You know, places where they carry out irrigation, they, are, they can actually make use of the pipeline to transport water from these dams to the irrigation sites where they are, uh, they are used. And also power transmission is an example of a specialized land transportation. So they transport power from the power station to the consumers. Now a good example is the Kanji Dam. You know, in the Kanji, what they do is that they transmit the power generated from the um, turbines to the power stations all over what, Nigeria that can be transmitted also from there to, what, to our various houses for use. So these are examples of what, of specialized land transport. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is the pipeline for transporting crude oil and other forms of liquid. And this is the, um, the ropeways and cableways they can use to transport passengers and also um, um, goods and services you know, from one place to another. And this is the tra um, transmission wire for transmitting electricity from the power station to, what, to the consumer. So these are what are called um, specialized land transportation. So let's um, look at water transport. Now water transport involves the movement of people and goods, you know, and services on water. And um, one thing about water transport is actually divided into two. It's divided into inland water transportation and also ocean navigation. Now when we move, you know, through water within the country, you know, we call it inland water, water navigation. And when we move through lagoons, we move through canals, we move through rivers, you know, within the confines of the country, we see it as what? Inland water navigation. Then for, you know, move, movement of goods and services from one country to another through um, the ocean, through seas, you know, is seen as the ocean water 
navigation. And this ocean navigation is what is, is, is a major um, key player in what in international trade all over the country. So we, we, let's look at um, the, the next um, mode of transport, which is the words, the air transportation. Now, the air transportation actually takes place in the air. And um, we make use of what? Of um, the airplane, the helicopter, and the rest. And the air transport services currently rendered in Nigeria is actually divided into two categories. The first one is the regular flight, and the second one is the charter words, charter flights. And under the regular flights for air transportation, we have the international and what and the um, internal or domestic words flights. So for the international flights, these are flights from Nigeria towards to different countries in the world. But for the internal or domestic flights, this is just the um, um, movement of passengers and goods via air transport from one state to, uh, to another world state. And um, all the air, um, airports we have in Nigeria, they provide what domestic or internal um, um, flight services. But for the international um, flight services, they are actually, you know, um, rendered in a few words, few airports we have in Nigeria. Example, the Lagos International Airport, the Port Harcourt International Airport, the um, Nandi Azikiwe um, International Airport, the Kano International Airport. These are examples of airports in Nigeria that um, provide what um, international flight services to their customers. Then the second um, type of air transport services that we have in Nigeria is called the charter flight. Now this one is actually um, held by companies, private companies and also government agencies. So they carry out um, personal um, flight services for their companies. You know, a good example is the NNPC, uh, let's say the Chevron, ExxonMobil. So these flight services they have for their staff and for yourself is actually an example of a charter flight. Then another good example is the DHL and other career services that are able to what, afford these services. So that's what um, the charter flight is all about. Now let's look at the advantages of road transport. Now the first advantage of road transport is that it is a very flexible um, mode of transport and a flexible mode of land transportation in the sense that it provides door-to-door -door services. In fact, it's just the um, mode of transport that can you know, link um, the producers to the consumers. Now, the second one also is that um, the road transport you know, provides speed for short and medium distance. If you're going to a, a distance that is less than a kilometer, you know, the best uh, mode of transport is the what? Is the road transport. Let's say I'm going from um, here in Transamadi, I'm going down to Artillery. I don't need a flight, you know, in River State. I don't need a flight. I don't need to go to the airport. I don't need to end, jump into, you know, any helicopter. I just need to end, use what? Use a vehicle or a motorcycle. And in the next 20 minutes or 10 minutes, I am there in what? In Artillery. You know, but for um, long distances, it does not what provides uh, provide a large speed for it. Now, also the next advantage of road transport is that it creates accessibility, you know, to con connect rural areas lacking rail or water transport. So, in places or villages where we don't have water transportation, we don't have rail transportation. The ideal mode of transport is the what is the road transport, and also. It integrates with other modes of transport like airports and railway stations. Now, the thing is this, when we look at the airports, we look at the railway transport, you cannot totally remove the road transport because where we have airports, we have what roads connecting to them. So this road transportation is actually integrated in water transport and also integrated in what? In air transport. And without it, there will be no complete um, effectiveness of these other words, modes of transport. And the next um, advantage of road transport is that it is ubiquitous. Now, in the sense that it is a general word, mode of transport. And this ubiquity is as a result of the popularity or the common and widespread um, availability of 
of what of road transport so anywhere you go you will find what a road and you find a road transportation in such a particular location so these are um, the advantages of what of road transport then for the disadvantages now number one disadvantage of road transport is that you cannot construct um, roads on high terrain you cannot it's very difficult to construct roads on in highland words highland areas and as a result of that is it, it becomes very expensive and also it hinders co uh, connectivity you know of these um, places then the next disadvantage of road transport is the weather you know when we have um, inclement weather conditions like heavy rainfall you know it can damage the road it can cause delay in traveling and it can as well cause erosion you know to that that, that will make the um, the road unsafe for passengers and the next um, disadvantage of um, road transport is that the vegetation in remote areas you know we have excess vegetation growing in remote areas it can obstruct roads you know it can reduce visibility you know i've been to places where the roads you know we have grasses you know and plants covering the entire road and because of that, it's very difficult to, uh, to travel through a, 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 a such particular uh, location. Now, the, the next um, disadvantage of um, road transportation is that um, reckless driving and poor enforcement of traffic rules can cause what? Accidents. Accidents that could easily be what? Prevented. So what I'm saying in essence is that road transport is also what? Prone to accidents and is prone to what? traffic congestion and also in remote areas we know we have cases of armed robbery cases of kidnapping you know on um, our various what, roads so we have cases where people when they are traveling to villages they end up being what kidnapped during, along the highway or along places where the um, where we have too much of what of farmlands and bushes around especially in villages so let's um, Let's look at the advantages of the next um, mode of transport, which is called the rail transport. Now, the rail transport is actually cost effective. You know, one easy or cheap way to carry bulky goods for a lesser amount is through the use of what? Of rail transport. And it's safe. It's what? It's safe. When you look at the, um, the level of accidents, it's usually what? Less. Like the, the, the last um, rail accident that I have witnessed, you know, after a very long period of time happened in what? In India this year. And you hardly have cases where um, we, we have um, a, a train derailing or, you know, accidents, you know, taking place on the rail track. It's very what? Very well, uh, rare. That's why it's seen as a relatively safe mode of what? Of transport. Now, the rail transport, you know, has a higher capacity. You know, it can carry many passengers and it can even carry volume of goods, you know. And this um, ability, you know, helps the economy to, uh, to scale up and become what? Become better. Then we also have cases of security, you know. Um, the fixed nature of rails, you know, makes the train more secured uh, against um, armed robbers compared to what to road transport so the way it is designed you know all the passengers are in the train in that is in their various coaches and the pathway most times they are usually what secured when you compare them to what to roads you know where an armed robber can what can easily what get you and what and kill you now um let's look at the disadvantages of rail transport now, the first disadvantage of rail transport is low speed, but this low speed actually concerns um, the developing countries of the world. You know, in advanced countries of the world, this um, disadvantage does not actually play out because they make use of advanced trains and they also have what? Bullet trains. So, in developing countries, the railways are very slower compared to air transportation, compared to land transportation and it can it can as well cause what delay then we have lack of flexibility as a disadvantage of rail transport you train a train can only function where you have railways you know aside that it cannot function and um, due to that reason there is what there is low level of what accessibility so it's very difficult to assess uh, assess the um, services of what of the railway um, transportation 
and also we have cases of what of terrain constraints you know a train requires a flat terrain you know for railways to be built and in, pl in places where we have mountains and mountains and mountains and a rugged topography it will be very very difficult to what to construct railways in such a particular place so this is also what a disadvantage then we have high maintenance what's cost high maintenance cost to maintain a railway infrastructure and to buy trains and maintain these trains they are very very what um, expensive so they require a very high level of um, high amount of investment and they require a high they require a high level of what of resources to be available before they can what before they can function now let's look at the specialized land transport the advantages and also we'll look at the disadvantage now for the specialized land transport they are cost effective in terms of advantage they are what they are cost effective now if you look at um, pipeline transport it is cost effective using what pipeline to transport this because you get to construct the pipeline once and what and for all and the only thing you do, need to do is what is to maintain it but if we are to transport those crude oil from the drilling site to the refinery via trucks we will what we will spend on what on the transportation we'll buy more fuel we'll buy more um, vehicles there is more trucks and it will what it will um it will cause a very what high expenditure so using the um, pipeline is cost what effective you know you have you it will help you transport from far distance at a low cost and also it is efficient Pipe, um, um, specialized land transport is very very what efficient because materials and energy will be moved continuously to far destination without interruption you know without any um, congestion without any hold up without anything so it is very what efficient for that reason and also it is a reliable means of transport because they are built on fixed structures and they don't uh, move they, 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 they don't change you know so like let, let me use an, an example if you look at the ropeways they are built on um, heavy chains and they're on fixed structures so they cannot be what altered making them more reliable compared to what compared to other means of transport now the disadvantage of um, specialized land transport is that it is not flexible the routes are fixed so mat materials can only be moved from one point to another and that's all so there is no flexibility in it and the next one is the um, the cost the cost of building these things the cost of maintaining them is, is you no know, is high so people spend so much to build pipelines they spend so much to build cable system and they spend so much to what to maintain them even the electrical um, transmission lines they spend so much to maintain all of this then we have um, cases of limited what application they can only function for a limited reason you know they are only designed for specific materials or for specific energy or for specific use you cannot use um, a transmission line for another purpose other than what electricity apart from electricity it's um, its purpose is what is just useless if it's not what electricity so they have a, a specific um, um, application or a specific use making it a disadvantage for what for them now let's look at the um, advantages of water transport water transport can transport large and bulky goods you know like um, I want let's say I want to um, transport cars from China down to Nigeria. So I make use of all the water transport because if I'm transporting 200 or 500 vehicles, the best way to transport it is by the use of what? Water transport. Now, the next thing is that it is safe, you know, for domestic and international um, transport. It has less accidents, though we have cases of accident, but it's usually what? Lesser when all protocols are duly what? Observed. And also, the maintenance cost and infrastructure cost is low because you don't, you, you don't build uh, the waterways, you don't construct them, so you spend less you know, in doing um, building trains and the building the seaports. So the next um, thing about water transport that's an advantage is that using existing water routes without heavy construction. So you keep on using the water route consistently, you use it and you're not constructing anything, just like the Apapa seaport and the Tinkan Island seaport. You see that these uh, ships that we pass through that um, uh, water route, they will pass over and over again. And the water route will still be there. 
So all those water routes will still exist and there will be no what, construction. Then the next advantage of, what, of um, water transport is that there is nothing like traffic congestion. When you look at road transport, we have traffic congestion. But for water transport, there is no what, traffic congestion. Then the disadvantage of water transport is that it is very what, slow. It is very slow compared to other means of transport. The water transport is very, very what, slow. And sometimes it can be affected by natural barriers. It can be affected by rapids and um, cataracts. It can be affected by waterfalls. It can be affected by the shallow depth of the river during navigation, especially during periods where you have a, um, a lower volume of water. And also in places where, um, that where the climate is very cold, we can also have issues of frozen waterways, especially um, in um, the um, northern hemisphere and the extreme southern hemisphere. You know, and this can hinder what transportation on water. Then we also have um, low level of water during dry season. It can restrict the cargo volume, especially in the West African region. And also wind and wave can as well what affect these um, water vessels and can as well cause accidents for them. So these are the disadvantages of, what, of um, water transport. Now let's go over to air transportation. What are the advantages of air transport? Now, air transport is actually the fastest mode of transportation for long distance. The fastest what, mode of transport for long what, distance. So if I'm traveling from, um, from um, Spain, to Australia, the, the fastest means of transportation I can use is what? Air transport. All other forms of transport will take you weeks, will take you months, but for air transport, it's a couple of hours or at most two days you're in your world destination. Now, um, it is not constrained by geographical barriers, you know, like height, like forest, like ocean. It's not affected by any of these words, barriers. So even if um, there's a highland around there, the air transport can navigate through it. Even if there's a forest there, you can pass through, it through the use of air transport. Even if we have ocean or big water bodies like that, we can as well what, pass through, what, through such. And the next advantage of air transportation is that it will enable what, quick delivery of emergency relief supply. Let's assume that a, a, a nation you know, is going through a turbulent time and um, there's a need for the World Health Organization to, you know, transport relief supplies to such a particular place. You see that the fastest way to get such to that country will be by the use of what? Air transport. A good example is the Ukraine-Russia war. You see that when supplies were sub, um, sent to Ukraine, they did that not by land, but by what? By air transportation. Now, it's also time efficient, you know, when you want to transfer people. You, it helps to save time because of its word speed. You know, if I'm traveling from Port Harcourt to Lagos, you know, if I'm traveling by flight, I won't spend more than an hour. But if I want to go through the land, um, um, uh, the road transport, I will spend nine hours, you know. So you see that it's time worth efficient. I have saved what eight hours of my time you know, going from Port Harcourt to, uh, to Lagos. And also, it is the best way to transport perishable goods. If you want to transport goods that will get bad on time, the air transportation is the what is one of the best ways you can what you can use in transporting such. So let's look at the disadvantages of air transport. Now, the disadvantages of air transport is the high cost when you compare to other modes of transport. You know, in our present day now, we spend, you know, thousands of naira, you know, when we tra travel via what? Air transport compared to the land transport. So you have transportation ranging over 100,000 or more down to a million naira, you know, compared to when you use the road transport and you end up spending less. And also there is always a risk of what? Fatal accident. You know, we have cases where when the climate condition is bad and all of a sudden we have what? Um, accident. Okay, so the next disadvantage of air transport is that it is vulnerable to what? To hijacking. So we've had um, cases where, you know, a plane will go missing and it's nowhere to be found. You know, we've had um, cases where, you know, all the passengers are, you know, totally missing and we, they can't even have a, what, a trace of 
where they are. So these are um, this, this is a problem of what of air transportation, you know. And the next um, problem or disadvantage is that aircrafts they are usually very expensive to acquire and also to maintain. You know, the level of maintenance is very high, and the level of uh, acquisition is also very what high. And they 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 cannot operate in adverse weather condition. You know, in a stormy and um, um, thunderous weather condition these aircraft or um, air um, transport facilities, they are actually restricted from what? From carrying out their duties. Then the next um, disadvantage of air transport is that they cannot provide door-to-door -door delivery. So it's, it's not as flexible as the, what, the road transportation. So what it does is that it will move from one airport to another airport or to another airstrip. So that's why it is not what a flexible means of transport. Now, let's look at the importance of transportation. Why is transportation important? Now, the first importance of transportation is that it enables people, goods and services, and even information to move from one place to, what, to another. So this is what an importance of, what, of transportation. Then the next importance of transportation is that it allows for trade, both locally and what, globally. Without transportation, there will be no what? There will be no effectiveness in trade. It will be very difficult to trade within and what, and outside. And the, uh, the next thing is um, transportation facilitates industrial growth. It facilitates what? Industrial growth. So it um, brings together capital, labor, and what, and raw materials. That's why you see that um, places where they have a sound transportation system, you see that the growth of the industries there will be very, very high. It will be on a very high scale. And also, it increases trade between towns and countries. Trade between what? Towns and what? Countries. So people buy from each other because they can easily come together and they can easily what? Exchange their goods and services. And also, transportation helps to spread ideas, to spread innovations, and to spread technology from one country to another or from one continent to another world continent. And another thing about transportation is that it connects nations. It connects nations and it also connects people. You know, people travel from one country to another. They travel from one continent to another. You know, and when they meet each other, they, what, they get to interact with each other. And as a result of that, there is always what, unity in the midst of what, diversification. So the next advantage of, uh, or importance of transportation is that it provides employment opportunities. We have some people making um, a fortune from the transportation sector. You know, they work there, they earn a living there, and it has you know, created employment for so many Nigerians and so many people all over the world, all over the Earth's surface. Now, what are the problems of transportation? So we're going to classify the problems of transportation into two categories. Now, we'll look at the problems of transportation in terms of physical world factors. Now, in terms of physical factors, the problems of transportation can be um, the terrain, you know, like a mountainous terrain or a highland terrain can, as, can affect um, transportation especially when you have to construct transportation network, it's very difficult on such a particular what, terrain. And also, long distances, they increase cost and what, and time. That's also a problem of transportation. Then we have uh, marshes, you know, or a marshland. It can affect the construction of roads, especially places where we have um, swamps and um, table water. So this can affect what, road building. Also, river can affect roads and railway constru um, construction. Especially in places where there's an overflow, it can affect road transport. Then there's also poor visibility, you know, and this poor visibility can affect what have their um, aeroplanes, it can affect helicopters, it can affect even water transport or ocean navigation. And also erosion, you know, in some places can cause damages to what? To railway tracks and also cause damages to what? to the roads that are found in these places. So that's for the problem. Then in terms of human um, factor, we have issues of 
insufficient funding for infrastructure and what and maintenance. Then we also have issues of lack of technical what expertise. You know, and because of this, um, you see we have a gradual decline or deterioration in what in the facilities that is being what managed. Then we also have um, lack of spare parts especially in the third world countries and developing countries of the world, then we also have low usage, you know, for some modes of what, of transport, like the rail transport. And, um, you know, when people don't use it so much, it will discourage what, construction of more um, of these, like rail transport. So that, that, that's why you see that rail transport is not in every location in what, in Nigeria. That's, owing to the fact that the usage is very low and because of that it will discourage further words further construction now let's quickly go to the exam guide let's go to the exam guide now we're going to pick a question from the year 2011 let's go to theory 2 Now, quickly, let's go to theory two. Um, theory two, um, question number, question number three in, in theory two. Okay, here we are in question number three in theory two. It says, highlight five advantages or uh, that air transport has over other means of transport highlight five advantages that air transport has over other means of transport. So you try to understand the question. It says the advantage it has, not necessarily the advantage itself for itself, but it has. Now, the first and the most common advantage is that is the fastest, you know, is the fastest mode of transport um, compared to what, to other modes of transport when it comes to long distances. And the second um, advantage it has over other modes of transport is that it can, you know, it can go through any terrain, you know, be it highlands, be it um, vegetation or forest, be it water bodies, you know, it can what it can go through that. And one thing about um, the air transport over other modes of transport is that it can access anywhere in the world. You know, there are some places that you cannot use the train to get to. There are some places that you cannot drive to. You know, there are some places that you cannot use water transport and get, you know, to. But the air transport, when you, f you can definitely, you can easily fly to anywhere, you know, in the world. That's the third word, the third leverage it has. Then the fourth one is that when it comes to um, carrying um, um, this thing, perishable goods, you know, that is the what that is the best um, mode of what of transport. If you want to carry transport something perishable, you know, you need what you need the air transportation to what to transport such. And then the last advantage it has other, um, over over um, other modes of transport is that since it um, it, it, it 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 uses um, is the fastest you know, it is the most efficient when it comes to what time. It is the most efficient uh, of all the means of transport when it comes to time. Like I said, if you're going from Portaco to Lagos through the road transport, you will spend more what, more time. You spend nine hours. But if you're going from the, um, um, from the airport, from Portaco to Lagos, you will not spend more than what more than one hour. So you see that it's time efficient compared to other what other modes of transportation. So um, let's look at the problems of air transportation. What are the problems? Number one, it is affected by what by weather condition. Air transportation is that mode of transport that you know weather can easily what restrict it. Number two, it is very very expensive. You know. It, it, the cost of um, using the um, air, air, air route, you know, is much more expensive com compared to other what, modes of transport. And number three, it is difficult to maintain. It is it it, it is it is very expensive as expensive to maintain and acquire. People spend more to buy this airplane. They spend more to maintain it, and they spend more to you know take care of the airstrip and the airports where this um, 
explain how what are functioning from. And um, the next disadvantage is that it is prone to hijacking. It is prone to, apart from hijacking, it, it, it is prone to what um, getting what missing, you know, an accident there. You know, we've had cases where we have we've had series of air, um, you know, aircraft accidents. You know, we have plane crash and we have missing what missing planes. So these are what are the problems. You know, limiting air transportation in Nigeria. So with that, we've um, come to the end of this class, and um, thank you for staying with us. See you in the next class. Thank <laughs> you.